Welcome to your Daily Dopamine with Dr. Joe McCullough, where we deliver daily doses of education, entertainment, and inspiration. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Oh, yeah. Okay, welcome, everybody. Let me turn this... Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joe. And I'm going to show you a pretty cool demo, Figueroa 3839, welcome. So for anyone who's been following me, kind of a little change of schedule. Today I was going to finish part three of how to double your reading speed, and I was going to show you a really cool physics demo tomorrow on Friday, but we have liquid nitrogen before another lab. And anytime we have liquid nitrogen, it's time to show a cool demo. So quick little change of schedule today. I'm going to show you some physics fun with liquid nitrogen, and then tomorrow I'm going to go through part three of how to double your reading speed. Hey, silver lining. So a little bit of background. What you're seeing, let me turn this around. Einstein right now is sitting on a cup of liquid nitrogen. So this is nitrogen in liquid form. The nitrogen in our air is usually a gas. Hey, Bobber, welcome. Nitrogen in our air is usually a gas, but nitrogen is a liquid between about negative 346 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So since this nitrogen is boiling, you can actually see it boiling. It is at about negative 320 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. What I have here is a balloon. What I'm gonna do is put the balloon inside the liquid nitrogen. And one, first we'll see what happens. And then two, what I'm gonna show you is you can liquefy the air inside the nitrogen. So let me back this up. I will try, and I'm not gonna be able to see any comments, but I'll show you putting this balloon in the liquid nitrogen. First off, I have a question for you. Huh? You just answered it. What do you think is gonna happen? And the answer is yes, it's going to shrink. Why is it gonna shrink? I'll go through that in a second. Let me first show it to you. So some of this is spilling over, but kind of hard to see. Give it a few seconds, and what you'll see is the balloon shrinking down. Oops, and then I'm going to put the entire thing on the table, and you'll be able to see it blow back up. Now you really should be having gloves on for this, but I've done this a bunch of times and not too concerned. You can totally see the balloon is deflating. Now it's almost completely deflated. And if I put the balloon back on the table, you'll see that the balloon is blowing back up. And what's happening is the nitrogen, well, let's do this whole thing again, but let me just pause this is actually cool physics magic okay so inside the balloon is just air air is about 78 percent nitrogen 21 percent oxygen and this liquid nitrogen boils at about 320 degrees below zero fahrenheit so what happens is the air that's inside this balloon is now going to get cooled to about 320 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. And when that happens, the air inside here is going to turn into a liquid. So I'm gonna shrink this again and then show you the little bit of liquid that all of the air inside this balloon has turned into. So we'll shrink this down. Do you do these types of streams often? So I do a weekly Ask a Physicist Anything on Wednesdays. And then Fridays, usually I'm showing some kind of cool physics demo, but today we had liquid nitrogen for a different lab. So I decided to just show you this. So once this shrinks all the way down, I'm gonna show you that all of the air inside the balloon has now liquefied. Well, I thank you, Vanessa, for following. All right, balloon is almost all the way down. Now you're gonna see something pretty cool all of the air that was inside this balloon. If you can see that, all the air that was in the balloon is now liquefied. And if I touch it with my thumb, 
you can hear it boiling. <laughs> it's kind of hard to touch for too long. You can see my thumb is starting to get cold. But this is the air that's inside the balloon. I'll do it one more time. So the answer is yes, it kind of hurts. And real quick, I could put my hand inside here quickly and bring it back out. And that's because what happens is as soon as the liquid nitrogen touches my hand, which is at you know room temperature, it quickly boils. But if I were to keep my hand in there for more than a second or two, I would not want to do that. Okay, so let me show you this one more time. I'm gonna put the balloon in and show you that all of the air that was inside the balloon is going to turn into a liquid. Nerd, you mean a physics person. Okay, so putting this in, where can you get liquid nitrogen? I'll go through that at the end. Pretty much any welding supply store. This balloon's getting kind of jacked. So let me just show you this one blowing itself back up. Slowly but slowly. Biology is awesome. Physics sucks. You might have to be the first person I block. All right, I guess I'm going to have to block this guy. Okay, let me turn around and say hello. So, hi, my name is Joe, and I'm going to show you this one more time. Hey there. We're here with some more of the physics people here at Cabrillo College. If you deflate it and tie a knot and let it reinflate, will it burst? Ooh, we might have to try that. What I want to show you one more time is see if I can get a good view of all of the air inside this turning into a liquid. We'll try this one more time, and then hopefully you'll get to be able to see a good view of it. What's that? Put a knot in it. All right, so right now you should see the balloon deflating. It's deflating because the liquid nitrogen is cooling the air inside the balloon to about 320 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. Once all of this air deflates, or the balloon deflates, you should be able to see all of the air that was inside the balloon. Now, is right there. That's a little bit of liquid. That's the air inside the balloon, which has turned into a liquid. And now as that air is heating back up and turning back into a gas, you will see the balloon start to inflate. That was amazing, thank you. Okay, we'll try this one more time and we'll knot it, and then I'll see if there's any questions. So let's deflate it. How do I block this guy? Okay, Josh, I'll be blocking you later once I figure out how. All right, here we go. So it's in. Let's see if I can tie it into a knot real quick. Ah, it's starting to inflate. <laughs> Whoa! Woo! <laughs> did you tie I did. <laughs> Block, all right. Hey, Josh, you were my very first person ever blocked. Okay, so let me turn this around. Huh? In about three weeks, I'm gonna be making liquid nitrogen ice cream for about 400 fourth graders. When we do that, I'll have a lot more liquid nitrogen, and I'm actually gonna show you how you can make nitrogen, liquid nitrogen ice cream. And it's some of the best ice cream you'll ever have. It's super good. Now, in terms of where can you get liquid nitrogen, any welding supply store, you can get liquid nitrogen, but you have to have a doer to carry it in. You can, I think, don't think you blocked Josh. It usually shows up in the feed. I did block him. Oh, we got one more person to block. Hey, two people blocked. I've never blocked anyone. Today is a uh, blocking kind of day. Thank you for sharing Xbox One. You're so welcome. So any questions that I can answer on this demonstration? So again, this is liquid nitrogen. Turn this around just nitrogen which is usually a gas but when it's below about 320 degrees fahrenheit at atmospheric pressure it turns into a liquid and so one more time for those of you joining late if i take a balloon which i just filled with the air in the room i put it inside here and that liquid nitrogen is going to cool the air inside the balloon to the point where it goes from gas to liquid because air is just mostly nitrogen and a little bit of oxygen. 
Well, not a little bit, about 21%. Okay, so again, once this is completely deflated, I'll show you the air inside one more time has turned into a liquid. All right, so there you go. The air inside here. And maybe you can hear it boil as it touches my finger. Okay, and then you'll see this inflating. How long will the thermos maintain the liquid state? Great question. So I filled this up to the top when I started about seven or eight minutes ago. You'll see that it's constantly boiling. So if I just leave it in this thermos like that, John, what do you think, an hour or two? Yeah. Probably an hour or two that it will continue to boil until it's all gone. What we do is we have these pretty cool doers. Let me pop in here real fast. <laughs> That's what we keep the liquid nitrogen in. <laughs> so if you do which is really just like a super duper thermos, you can keep liquid nitrogen for a day or two. Yeah, any thermos, any kind of doer like that, you can take to a welding supply store and get liquid nitrogen. Okay, well, for those of you joining, thank you so much. Tomorrow, instead of doing a physics demonstration since I did it today, we're talking about how to double your reading speed. Totally digging the scope. Thank you. Worst username ever. <laughs> Can you make water ice cubes quickly with that? So let me just show you one more thing. I will pour some water into the liquid nitrogen. That was pretty cool. So what's happening there is the water is just quickly boiling the liquid nitrogen. And then let me blow some of this away. Woo! <laughs> Just trying to show you that in here, what's happening is the water is quickly turning into ice. Mad scientist mode, yeah. Okay, that was it for today. A very quick demonstration, but Next time I get liquid nitrogen, we'll do some more demos. And tomorrow I'm going to talk about five simple strategies to double your reading speed. Why, thank you for everybody joining. Be my professor, excellence, thanks, awesome scope. Thank you everyone joining. My name is Joe. I'm the physics program chair at Cabrillo College in Santa Cruz, California. And I scope daily, providing daily doses of dopamine through education, entertainment, and inspiration. Today was all about a little bit of education. Tomorrow I hope to inspire you to read faster. Okay, thank you so much for everybody joining. My name is Joe, and I hope to catch you later on this week. Have a wonderful Thursday.